Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video we will dive into the topics of stability and immutability in Jetpack Compose, what they actually mean and how we can use these concepts to boost the performance of our Jetpack Compose code. So generally stability and immutability are both concepts which affect how the Jetpack Compose compiler will perform recompositions. So maybe just a quick recap to that. I prepared a little example here where we have a selected Boolean, which is a compose state. And then we have a column with a checkbox and a context list. And when this Boolean, which is a Jetpack compose state now changes, what Jetpack compose will do is it will take a look which composable functions actually need this Boolean and it will then recompose these. So in the end, it will just recall these functions with these changed parameters. So in this example, it would take a look in column then take a look in checkbox and see if it actually needs the selected boolean. Yes, it does. And if that selected boolean changed, it will recompose this checkbox composable. Because after that boolean was changed from false to true, this checkbox now looks different than it looked before, since there is now a check in it. And after that, it will, it will take a look here in this context list composable. Okay, no, that does not need the selected boolean, so it should not be recomposed. And in that case, if compose sees that a composable does not need the state that changed, it will skip it. So that means in this case, it will not call this context list composable, since that would of course cost uh, CPU resources, which we wouldn't need to spend in that case, because this composable doesn't even use state that changed. And in general, the Jetpack Compose compiler already tries to optimize this as much as possible. So it always tries to figure out that it should really only recompose what really needs to be recomposed, and not what actually didn't change. But in some cases, it can't know that. And in these some cases where Jetpack Compose doesn't no, okay, should I now recompose this composable or rather not? You as a developer might know something that Jetpack Compose doesn't know. And with that knowledge, you can still tell the compiler about your knowledge, so Compose can still optimize these recompositions. And that is what we will get into here, because that comes down to stability and immutability. And before I really explain these concepts, I want to show you a little demo of this app that I've built. So as you can see, it's really just a checkbox and a list that is printed as, as a normal text composable here. And if we now want to check that if we toggle this checkbox here, which composables will really be recomposed after that change was done, then we can see that in our layout inspector in Android Studio. So we can open this here, or maybe you don't see this here in this bar, then you can find it here by clicking on these three dots. But then this window will open up, we can zoom in a little bit, and here we now see our Jetpack Compose UI, and when now a recomposition happens, the corresponding composable will be highlighted red. And we can also see the recomposition count here if we open this compose tree on the left right here. And if a recomposition happens, then in this column, we will see a one or a two or how many recompositions actually happened. And this column corresponds to how often this composable was skipped. So how often the compose compiler did not recompose it because a recomposition was not needed. And if we now take a look here in our app and we actually move it so that we see both these UIs and we untoggle this checkbox again and take a look here on this layout inspector, then you notice actually both these composables are flashing red. If we toggle it again, the same thing happens and we can also see that both these composables actually recompose. You can see we have the recompose count two here in this column, but isn't that contrary to what I said before? Didn't I say that if the selected boolean changes, compose will only recompose what actually needs this state? And that is this checkbox. But this context list composable doesn't really have a reference to this state, but it's still recomposed. It was still recalled with all the composables inside of that composable as well. And the answer is yes, that composable should be skippable. If the selected boolean changes, then this should not recompose because it doesn't need that selected boolean. But why does Compose still recompose it? Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand what makes a composable skippable. So what allows the compiler to skip this and not recompose it when a certain state changes? And that is where we really come to the concepts of stability and immutability. So an object is considered stable when the Compose compiler knows about changes of that object. So in short, if that object is a Compose state, that is the whole concept of this mutable state of that is just a wrapper around a normal object, a normal primitive, any class, which makes sure that if this changes, all the composables that use the state will be notified. So that is really what we mean with stability. And if we now take a look in a composable, if all parameters a composable takes are considered stable, then the Compose compiler will mark this composable function as skippable. And that makes a lot of sense, because if all these fields that we pass to a composable 
are composed states, then that also implies that this composable will always know about the changes of these fields. But what is really the issue? The issue is actually not this Boolean, the issue is this names list. Because even if we would wrap this names list here in a Jetpack composed state, we would still see the same issue. And the problem is that if we pass a list of type string here, that looks immutable on, on the surface, but it really isn't always immutable. And since the Compose compiler can guarantee that we pass an immutable list here for this names list, it will also mark this names list as unstable. And that will cause this whole composable to be unskippable. So while we pass a list here, which we can't mutate, it, it doesn't prevent us from actually passing something like a mutable list of. That also is completely fine here in this sense. And since Compose wouldn't know of changes to this mutable list itself, so if we would use this list somewhere else and maybe add an entry, that is something the Compose compiler would never know about even if this mutable list would be a Compose state. That is actually something we also have a function for. So there is mutable state list of, which is, um, which is the Compose version of mutable list. So that is something you could use. Um, but that does not allow us to get a little bit deeper into these uh, stability and immutability concepts. But that is really the, the issue here with this function and why it gets recomposed, even though it shouldn't get recomposed. So in short, compose simply can't know what we pass for this list. It could be an immutable one, but it could as well just be a mutable list. So it better marks this as unstable and recomposes this composable more than often to still have a consistent UI. So what could we do in this case? What we sadly can't do is we can't annotate single parameters with a stable because that is the compose annotation. How we can mark something as stable is basically a promise from us developers to the compose compiler that we will really pass an immutable list here that this list won't change under the hood. But for single parameters that does not work, but we can use the stable annotation for whole classes. So if we go down here and we have a data class, for example, contact list state, and we put our same fields in here, so our is loading boolean and our uh, names list, which is a list of type string. If we pass this state in here, in our context list, context list state, and we say, okay, if state that is loading and state dot names, and we go up here to actually create the state instance, state is equal to contact list state and do something like this, then it's really just the same setup as before. Let's uh, switch this back to normal list. Then now if we relaunch this and take a look here in our layout inspector, if we click on our checkbox, then we still see that both these composables are recomposed, both are flashing red. So that itself did not fix it yet. But if we now go ahead and annotate this class here with at stable, then that is basically a promise from us to the Compose compiler that the Compose compiler will definitely be notified about changes of these fields. So it's basically a promise that we say, hey, we definitely don't pass a mutable list here. And we are aware that if we do that, that could lead to issues in our code. So that is important to understand. Just because we annotate an object with a stable doesn't mean it is stable by default. It's really just that we as developers say, hey, this object is intended to be stable based on its API, based on the functionality it provides. We could still kind of violate that contract with a Compose compiler, but that could backfire because Compose might skip a composable, even though it should not be skipped in that case. So if we annotate an object with stable, then we really should treat it as a stable object. So if we now relaunch this, you will see something cool. Take a look in the layout inspector, wait until it's attached. I'll zoom in a little bit like here. If we now toggle our checkbox, then you will see only the checkbox will recompose. So with this stable annotation, we now effectively achieved a performance optimization, a little performance boost, since this uh, contactless composable does not get recomposed anymore when we toggle our checkbox. We can also see this here in our recomposition count. So only the checkbox is now recomposed but the context list is actually skipped five times. And in Kotlin, data classes are actually marked as stable by default if they actually only contain stable objects in their constructor or actually in the class itself, not only the constructor. So if we would not have the stable annotation and instead of this list, we would have something like, whoops, um, I don't know, 
maybe just a single name, which is a string. And then since Boolean and string are both types that are stable by, by default, then that means all these types inside of this, this data class are stable. So the whole uh, class is marked as stable by the Compose compiler as well. But if we have something like a list here, then a list is not stable by default. So Compose will also not mark this list as or this class as stable by default, but we can still do that on our own. Okay, so much about stable, but I also mentioned that there is another concept called immutability because that is also an annotation we could give our class, um, immutable, which also comes from Compose. If we try this out, take a look in our layout inspector, right here, and zoom in a little bit after that was attached like this. Take a look here, if we now toggle our checkbox, then you can see that also achieves the same result in our case, uh, that our context list is not recomposed when we toggle our checkbox. Why is that or what does immutable now mean uh, compared to stable? Immutable is an even stronger promise to the Compose compiler than stable because immutable says that nothing in this object itself will ever change and if this object changes we will pass a completely new instance of it. So that is something the Compose compiler can use to now check, okay, is this object's reference actually the same as the reference it was before when a recomposition happens? And if it is, it already knows that nothing inside of this object changed because we marked it as immutable, which basically says, hey, this object will never change. No fields inside of that object will ever change. It's completely immutable. And if this object changes, we will definitely pass a new instance of it. So in, in case of a data class, we would uh, create a new instance with a copy function, for example. But what would definitely not be allowed is if we would have a var in here because that would mean that fields inside of this class could change without the class changing itself and we could still mark this as immutable telling the compose compiler to treat this as an immutable object but as soon as we change this is loading boolean and just this is loading boolean uh, that will really or that could really cause issues in our code because we told the compose compiler something about our class that we don't really fulfill. So how does that now compare to the stable annotation? Um, the stable annotation is a bit more flexible than immutable. So immutable is a really strong promise and stable is a, a little bit weaker promise because a stable could also contain mutable fields. So this class could contain mutable fields as long as the compose compiler will know about changes of these mutable fields. So in the end, they need to be composed state. So if this is loading boolean would be a var here and this would be a composed state, which it currently isn't, then this would also be fine to mark it as stable. But with immutable, that would not work. So if we annotate this with immutable and we will still make this is loading in a compose state, then that would violate the concept of immutability in the sense of compose. Okay, um, let's change this back so nobody of you uh, get some bad ideas. But there are some last notes that I would really like to share and these are important. So please listen to these last few thoughts here. On the one hand, what you can do is if you still pass a list here, so if you still have is loading and your oops and your oh, come on uh, and your names list, then you you can use this list, which would be unstable by default. Uh, I showed the issues here, but you can also use an immutable list that is um, a data type that comes from a specific dependency from JetBrains which is marked as stale by default. So with these immutable lists, Compose will know, okay, this list will actually not change. This list is definitely mutable. Um, so if we do this, have a string here, you actually need a dependency for this. So I added this already here, um, which is this dependency. I think it's currently also a little bit experimental. You can see it's a, not a very high version, um, but that also works for um, multi-platform, which is actually also worth noting if um, if you have a, a pure Kotlin module in your code base and that Kotlin module introduces a data class that only consists of uh, stable types like booleans, strings, ints, and, and so on, and you then use that data class in a Compose module, then Compose is not able to mark this as stable by default, even though it should be stable because the Compose compiler can only mark objects as stable if the Compose compiler is applied in the module which introduces that data class, I hope that makes sense. So that is why it's really helpful to also use this immutable lists in uh, multi-platform projects, since with these, you don't run into the risk that you maybe share such a state class in your shared code, but that then gets marked as unstable because it contains a normal list or so. But either way, that is something you can definitely do. So then you can just pass the same types here. Everything will be fine. Up here, we can just leave it as we had it before. 
In this case, this won't be a normal list of, but a persistent list of. That is how we create these immutable lists. And here the Compose compiler will really know, okay, these are completely immutable. We couldn't cast these secretly under the hood to immutable list and mutate these um, because if it's a persistent list or immutable list, then um, it's definitely immutable. But the last really important thought that I really want to share here is that doing this in most cases is a non-noticeable improvement. I mainly want to share these concepts because I consider it quite important to understand what happens under the hood, to understand how recompositions work, and to just get a better feeling of how Compose works overall. But what I definitely don't want to achieve here is that you spend a lot of time doing this little bit fine-tuning on a very low level with these annotations here if it's actually not necessary. So you're definitely not making any major mistake if you leave these annotations. It can happen that a composable might not be skipped even though it could be skipped. But here I really like the quote, premature optimization is the root of all evil. So definitely use these annotations to your advantage if you have a performance problem. So if you notice your UI is laggy, if you notice it's slow, it feels sluggish, then that is something you can look into. And then that is something where you can see, okay, are there actually any unnecessary recompositions? Can I maybe use these stable and immutable annotations to improve that? Then it's a totally valid thing that you can do, but I wouldn't do this before you actually have a performance problem. So I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into these concepts. If so, then below this video, you will find a link if you want to work together with me one-to-one -to, -one to bring your Android skills to the next level over the course of 10 weeks to really eliminate all your technical doubts and make you feel more confident as an Android developer. In that case, click the link, apply for my 10-week mentorship program. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.